Excelsior! From the darkest corners of the vault, ah! it's the most annoying X-Play characters. Wrong. And their disturbing origin. Oh! Oh! Don't backwash in the Southern Comfort. It's game time. Chinese chuck. Hello and welcome to X Play. Our show runs on sweatshop intern labor, unfiltered cigarettes, and you know that gin brand gin. What Morgan's saying is that we're a lean operation. There's not a lot of redundancy here, and there aren't a bunch of spare parts. So the fact that we took off three non consecutive days during the greater winter holiday season arc means we have nothing new to put in today's show. So we had a television studies major from Cal State North. Go Matadors! Wow. Hey, let's say schools have Matadors now? Yeah, they used to be the fighting Armenians, but. You know, they were protests. As I was saying, we got an intern to dig up clips of the very first episodes where our most beloved characters were born. Classic origin stories of such characters as Bob and Steve, Ratty Hand Puppet, someone else, the old man guy who may or may not have a name. Stumpy Hazelton. Mm. Everyone's favorite testicle crushing ass cookie baker Johnny Extreme, and many others. And by many others, she means the Yu Gi Oh gang. Yeah. So, in conclusion, we've taken the parts of X Play that we do just to amuse ourselves and assembled them together into a show which will provide almost no valuable information. But it will have wigs, oceans of wigs, enough wigs to populate an AME church on Sunday morning. We begin with one of our most venerable characters, a wide eyed Hyrulean boy whose quest for true love has been one of the overarching storylines for the 27 years X Play has been on the air. And here's the very first segment that featured Drunk Link, our review of The Legend of Zelda Minish Cap. There is good news in the world for anyone that has poor depth perception. Capcom has finally released its new 2D game for the GBA. You heard me correctly. Both of the glorious dimensions will be on display for all to see in The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. And they've never looked so good. <laughs> the world of Hyrule is holding a yearly festival when the inevitable happens. Zelda gets in trouble. She's turned to stone and once again Link has to save her. I always tell her, don't get kidnapped. Pfft, Legend of Zelda. Should be legend of that dumb can't stay out of trouble. Yes, Link is the bearer of a heavy burden. He must journey through the land to reforge a long broken sword. It is the only way to break the curse and free Zelda. I mean, why is it always called the Legend of Zelda? I'm the one doing all the work. I mean, I gotta fight for a subheading. Link to the past. Worst pun ever. The Minish Cap is your typical Zelda fair. You'll run around ripping up vegetation, <laughs> smashing vases, <laughs> and stepping on blocks. You'll also find some new friends in the Minish Village and a really annoying talking hat. A talking hat? A talking hat? I thought that ocarina was a pain in the ass. <laughs> You also do some other really, um, well, really odd things. Um, uh, can we show this? And an organ grinder from Nambla shows up in what has to be the most unfortunate positioning of a character in gaming history. Oh, Link, it's not worth it. Yeah, I did it, but I don't care. See this? This is my new girl. Who are you? Take that, Zelda. Come here, baby. <laughs> Take my hat off. <laughs> oh, 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 I miss her so much. Oh, Zelda. Oh, God. Every fan of the Zelda franchise will love this game. The graphics are the best production the GBA has to offer. Capcom has brought new energy to the franchise while staying faithful to the formula. There is actually nothing bad to say about this game. 
Unless you count this. You're gonna go blind if you keep doing that. Hello, is Zelda there? Link, are you drunk? Just put her on the damn phone. Watch it, mister. Can you just tell her Link called and tell her that the, the Legend of Zelda and the Minish Cap gets a five out of five? one question that we always get. There's Southern comfort in the bottle. And you may have noticed celebrity nerd ass Blair Butler there in an early film role. Blair was actually nominated for Daytime Emmy Award for that role, but was later disqualified when they realized we're barely a television show. And as we head out to break, here is the birth of one of our most annoying characters, Screaming Intern. This is something from us to you. It's one of our very own interns. Isn't he gorgeous? He's from a West Coast vocational technical school. Now, you may remember him as our screaming intern. <gasps> I know. So I was dating this girl, right? Her name is Zelda. So she got kidnapped, and then she got turned to stone, and I was cell shaded and I was like seven. Did I tell you about Zelda, my girlfriend? Up next, our first glimpse of Morgan Von Vebb. And later, Bob and Steve meet America on X-Play. Web and welcome to my web of destruction. Test three, the demon drop. It's a long, long way down. Oh, Xbox, there is no way to turn you on. You lose. Welcome back to X-Play. That was Morgan as Morgan Von Webb. We're looking back at the origins of the most beloved characters from X-Play. Those need to display our collective acting talents in hopes of getting recurring roles on Ugly Betty next season. But the finest thespians working in basic cable today are those two incorrigible scamps of existential machinima, Bob and Steve. When America needs a hero. <gasps> when freedom stands alone. When justice needs to be upheld, there's only one place to turn. Through the cover of night, America's top agents will defend our liberty from those who wish us harm. Let us join Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve, two of the finest official unofficial splinter cells. Once I get these files, we'll find the vice president and get out of here. Dude! What? You're an idiot! Now we have to find another terminal. Come on, don't be pissed. Steve, Steve, it was a joke. You want to play Navy Seals? No. Come on, I'll be Charlie Sheen, and you can be whoever else was in that movie. I think Bill Paxton was in that movie. You can be him. I'm not playing Navy Seals. And Bill Paxton was not in that movie. Dude! What? Let's finish the job. Can we just drop it? He wasn't in the movie. <laughs> Jesus, did you really need to kill him? Why? Dude, this guy had the job of patrolling the sewers, and you just go and break his neck? Wait, wait, what are you doing? Goodbye, sewer boy. Man, that would look great in my living room. Hey, we should do a trading spaces. No. Come on, it'll be fun. You can redo my bathroom and I'll do your living room. Yeah, that's totally how I want to spend my day off. Fixing your bathroom while Navy SEAL Sheen turns my living room into a bad 80s movie. It, uh, it came out in the 90s. It still doesn't change the fact that Bill Paxton wasn't in it. <sighs> you shot me. You shot me! And I revived you, so shut up. Listen, let's just finish the mission and I'll forget you. Who is that? Hey, buddy, was Bill Paxton in Navy SEALs? Oh, you don't want to talk? Well, maybe this will refresh your memory. What's wrong with you? Just go grab the vice president so we can go. 
I'm glad we're alone. My partner just doesn't understand how romantic time alone with an insignificant guard can be. Just take it easy, Mr. Vice President. Everything will be all right. We don't want to hurt you. You're a wonderful dancer. I can, I can tell you enjoy this. The look on your face says it all. What are you doing? Nothing. Right. Can we just do this? Your hair smells like ginger. All right, it's Navy SEALs time, so just don't break the computer. Dude, that was not my fault. Hey, look, Bill Paxton was in Navy SEALs. IMDB said... Hey! We're almost out of here, just down that tunnel. Which Navy SEAL are you? Well, I guess I'll be Bill Paxton. Steve? Steve, I'm coming! Steve, Navy SEALs! Join us next week when Steve and Bob disarm more terrorists with their amazing cunning and stealth. So I said to her lady, if you wanted the parking space so bad, you should... Whoa! Bob and Steve are currently doing a production of Waiting for Godot at the La Jolla Playhouse that's getting rave reviews. They plan to take it to Broadway in time for 2008 Tony consideration. Our next character was a Tony winner himself for last year's revival of A Raisin in the Sun. Here's a look at the origin of our beloved ratty hand puppet. Um, excuse me. I don't think I'm very comfortable with this subject matter. Uh, oh my god, it's a ratty old puppet. <laughs> um, it's just that I think this game is a murder simulator that's responsible for our society's moral decline. It doesn't have any redeeming value. But you can use the barns as a doorstop. It's true. Oh, look, it's my shadow. Enjoy six more weeks of winter, bitches. In a moment, more Origins on X-Play. The dumbest idea I ever heard. Get the f*** out of my office. Please, please welcome eternally respawning co-hosts Morgan Webb and Adam 2.0. Welcome back to X-Play. I'm Adam 2.0, a younger, hipper version of Adam Sessler. You know, you really do look like him. Thanks. I was cloned in his image with a few modest improvements. I have a USB port. Do you want to know where it is? Ew. What? You can stick a dongle in Ew. it. Ew. See? That's exactly how you would have responded if the original Adam had said that. Damn, you're right. And I can introduce segments just like the first Adam Sessler. Here's a review of Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Welcome back to X-Play. Today is a theme episode, and we're sorry, but we're looking back at the very first appearance of some of our most beloved characters. Next up, the only character on X-Play with more questionable bladder control than Adam, Stumpy Hazelton. Welcome to Gaming History with the witty Stumpy Hazelton. Was the day this generation was born with the ill-fated Dreamcast. Games like NFL 2K and Sonic Adventure made sure that a lot of people bought it. And it was the first time I could play again my kinfolk across the holler. You just take this here cord and plug it into that there hole. The easiest part. Oh, <laughs> and now the Dreamcast controller. Where did I put that, that thing? No! Oh, God, it's bad. That go bad. Let's see, where was I? Oh, yeah. PlayStation 2. Boy, those games was as ugly as my second wife. Jaggy as a bandsaw blade. There wasn't nothing to play. But people still bought it. Then they went and made all these hippity-hop characters that I don't care too much for. Whoa, this is great! What, over here? Yeah, the Dreamcast died like a coon in a bear trap. I don't you understand it. Bill Gates, the city slicker he is, decided he needed more money. So he made the Xbox. Oh, the damn heaviest machine you'll ever see. It made things awful pretty, and everyone was playing that shooting game, Halo. And they kept playing that shooting game while they waited for another shooting game called Halo 2. I need a weapon right this way. In between, there was a few goodies, but that sucker sunk in Japan like a burlap sack full of kittens in the Mississippi. Then there's the GameCube, 
Nintendo wanted me to plug everything into its purple lunch pail, but games. Oh, no! You plug the Game Boy in here, and you plug the online thingy here, which they sucking me into buying. It's the bottom one. There's too many holes. Then they go and tease me with this here Zelda game. It was a thing of beauty. But then they went and made it so nice I wouldn't like it. In conclusion, the old PlayStation 2 did a lot of ass whooping because it had games for people who work at fast food restaurants. Join us next time when Stumpy explores the PSP. Where did daggum games go? Go! Oh! Uh, I think I broke it. Stumpy actually came about during a brief G4 revamp when all our programming was targeted to surly retirees. Right. To learn more about G4, come on over to g4tv.com slash xplay where you can watch our reviews, you can read our reviews, and you can even taste our reviews. We have impressive web technology. It's Roger the Stan Lee Experience. He's not Stan Lee, but an incredibly inaccurate simulation. Kids, please cover your ears. So I called Jack Coyby into my office, and I got to cover a Fantastic Four 73 sitting there, and I said, hey, Jack, you notice anything different about it? And he said, yeah. My name's not on it. I said, that's because you're fired. Get the f*** out of my office. It was the best Ben Grimm he ever drew. Kids always ask me, where did the idea for Mr. Fantastic come from? Two words. My pants. Don't believe me? Ask Koibi's wife. That Up next, where these guys came from on x play Get ready for Adam Zessler's new show. It's going to punch your balls off. Producers and I got together and we found a group of Pokemon players for you to play with. Really? Right over there. Oh boy! Come out, bitches! Oh, I'm all in, son! Oh, yeah! You guys play Pokemon? Pokemon? This is Yu Gi Oh! Town, mother. The wrong good, Holmes. Yeah. Really? Chew? <laughs> You know, the best part of this job is helping a man feel good about himself. Well, my work here is done. Be sure you tune in to the next Sensitive Sess. We're taking a man with a fear of nerds to Gen Con Anaheim. Welcome back to X-Play. We are perpetuating X-Play lore by showing you the origins of all of our favorite X-Play characters. My favorite X-Play character for the record is Kelly, the FCC standards and practices bold. You? I'm my favorite X-Play character. Actually, fat, bald, gay guy is a close second, though. He sure is fat, bald, and gay. Good eye. Yeah. Since the show is almost over, let's just get a bunch of the rest of them out of the way. Here you go. Once again, your explosive hosts, Morgan Webb and Johnny Extreme. Yeah! Off the top rope and into your ass! It's X-Play Extreme! That was right in my ear. That's so you can hear me to the max! Welcome back to X-Play. We still have guest hosts. To the extreme! Yeah, they get it. Are you ready for some TV so hot it's gonna feel like you took a tray full of cookies and baked them up in your ass? Ew. Then get ready for Adam Sessler's new show. It's gonna punch your balls off. Extreme! Yeah. Now you. If I have to kill one more worthless god, I'm going myself. Yesterday, I killed the god of sock puppets. <laughs> I don't God feel like so a man anymore. <laughs> I am a patient man. Call Adam or Morgan. They'll tell you who I am. <laughs> Your friends cannot save you now. Make no mistake, you will not leave this place alive. Julio del Montalban. Julio? Prepare to be shocked with Shad Grim Gravy. Ah! Hello, and welcome to the horrifyingly true world of video game violence. I'm your host and guide, Shad Grim Gravy. And yes, it's true. Inside the confines of a harmless world like video games, chaos reigns. Chinese checkers, Clue and the game of life. These are games, but not like these. 
Oh, hello. I'm Patrick Stewart. You may know me from Star Trek The Next Generation and X-Men 2, X-Men United. Excuse the appearance, I'm here filming another damn classic. But it's not about me, Patrick Stewart. I'm here to talk about an exciting, fascinating video game for 2005. But it's not on the Xbox. Oh, no. This is Splinter Cell, Chaos Theory. Fully engaged. We get calls like this all the time. Domestic abuse situations. Old boyfriend comes back, doesn't like what he sees. Yeah. We'll take care of it. That's hey, don't hey, you ever, sir, sir, put the weapons down, man. Yeah. Step away from me. Don't you yell at me. Hey, put the right. weapons down. But they're not. Slowly, put them right. down slowly. Right. What's that, this? What do we got that's here? That's not mine. Oh, that's not this mine. Is yours, then who's that's it? not mine. He gave it to me. It's hey. his. Whoa, whoa, stop right there. Where are you going? Sykes, get on that. Don't, this hey, don't fall. And now it's time for the X-Play Replay. Today's episode was self-indulgent. Yeah, since there are no scores, uh, we're gonna, just gonna have to give you a moral for the episode. Let's go with measure twice, cut one. Sure. Okay. This was a special origins episode of the television show called X-Play. 